Hello again everyone, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at fractions. We are in our home links, uh, Unit 3, Lesson 8, and today we are looking at the relationship between fractions and decimals. Uh, if you take a look at the first set of problems for number 1, it says fill in the blanks in the table below. In word form, we have the fraction 1 tenth. Okay, so how would we represent that as a fraction and as a decimal? Well, it would be helpful if we looked at a model first. So one-tenth basically tells us that we have a, a shape or an object that has been cut into ten parts, and one of the tenths is being represented there. So here's a rectangle. I'm going to split it in half. I'm going to split it again so I have ten parts. You know, ideally they would be equal, but I hand drew it. So one tenth would look like that. Okay. Now, when I write one tenth as a fraction, I put the numerator, the number of parts shaded in, on top, and then I put the denominator, the total number of parts, on the bottom, like so. Now, in decimal form, uh, we uh, are using uh, our number system. And instead of that line right there that shows us the difference between parts and holes, we use the decimal point. That little dot, or period, as whatever you want to call it, that decimal point, is like the line in our traditional fraction, uh, and it signifies the difference between parts and holes. Okay. Now, to the left of our decimal point, we have the ones place value. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. When we go bigger than nine, we get into the tens place value, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. Okay. But on the right hand side of that decimal point, we have the tenths. Okay. That's parts of a whole that are cut up into ten possible parts. So one tenth would be represented like this, zero point one, okay. And again, the one right here is the one tenth, okay. And we know that to be true because it's on the right hand side of this decimal point, okay. So decimal notation of fractions is just another way of representing the same idea. Okay, so in our second row it says four tenths. So I would write the fraction four over ten, just like we did with one tenth. And then over here in the decimal form I would write zero point four. And again, whenever I see a digit on the right hand side of a decimal point, I know it's always a fraction out of tenths. Okay. Now, let's take a look at that word form again. Okay, one tenths. So, when we deal with fractional parts and we write them out in word form, you're going to see that there is a hyphen in between the numerator and the denominator version. Okay, one tenth. Four tenths. So when I write out the word form of a fraction like this one, eight tenths or eight over ten, I have to include that hyphen. Okay, so eight hyphen tenths. Okay, that th at the back signifies that we are talking about ten parts of one whole versus ten holes. Now then, let's take a look at some of these other parts, okay? Number two says, name two ways you might see decimals used outside of school. Well, uh, if you've ever been in a store, uh, I bet you've come across all kinds of decimals because uh, in our American economy, we like to uh, talk about things in terms of dollars and cents, Um and oftentimes retailers will advertise a price uh, of, a, of an item and they'll say something like it's a dollar ninety nine 
okay? That $1.99 is essentially $2 because it's only off by a penny. But uh, uh, when a consumer sees the one part of the $1.99, they tend to ignore the fractional parts behind it. They see the one and they think, oh, $1, okay? So a uh, $1.99 is about $2, but because they knocked off a cent, uh, it's represented as one ninety nine or one dollar and ninety nine cents, and so our brains initially think, "Oh, one dollar." That has been a, a tried and true trick that retailers have used for years. Okay. Now we have a number line uh, that we need to consult for problems three, four, five, and six. It says, "What decimal is represented by the tick mark labeled M?" Okay, that little hash mark or that little line right there. If the left hand side of my number line is zero and my right hand number line is one, where is M? Okay, well just by looking at it and again without breaking out a ruler or anything, that looks to be roughly one half. But wait, Mr. Wassman, the first question is not what fraction? It says what decimal? What decimal? Okay, well, right below it, it says fraction. So let's think about that one first. So the halfway point would be considered one half. Now, when we are dealing with fractions that are not out of ten tenths, we would have to create an equivalent fraction, okay? So 2 is a multiple of 10 because you can multiply 2 times 5 to get you to 10, or skip count by 2's, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that gets you to 10. So to create a, a fraction that is equivalent to 1 half in tenths, I would have to multiply 2 times 5 and then multiply the top number by 5. So 1 half is equivalent to 5 tenths as a fraction. Okay. Now that we've converted 1 half into tenths, we can then see it again as a decimal because if 4 tenths gives us 0 0.4, then 5 tenths would give us 0.5. Okay. So half of a dollar is worth 50 cents. Um, one half of a dollar is represented by a fraction, but when we talk about the, uh, the dollar value of half of a dollar, we talk about it in base 10 numbers, which includes decimals. Okay. Then finally, uh, down at the bottom, we have some uh, review of factors. Uh, list all the factors of 100. Well, that's really useful to know, especially when we talk about money, because there are 100 cents to a dollar. So what are all the different ways you can multiply uh, two numbers together to get to 100? Well, you could have one dollar bill, which is 100 cents, one times 100. You could have two 50 cent pieces, 2 times 50. You could have 4 quarters, or 4 times 25. You could have 20 nickels, which is 5 times 20. And then you could also have 10 dimes, which is 10 times 10. So these are all the factor pairs of 100. Um, broken down in terms of coins. And hey, that's no coincidence that uh, we uh, arranged our money system in that way. That all the coins that you find in the bottom of your couch or in your mom's purse or sitting in your piggy bank are factors of 100. 
Okay, boys and girls, I am confident that you can complete the rest of these home link questions on your own. Complete the table, think of ways that decimals are used outside of school, and then complete re the rest of these problems. If you have questions on how to do those, uh, reach out to your math teacher. That's what they are there for. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.